Hey you, wake up! We're not done yet. In the last video, we just got started by dragging this source box into this target drop zone box like this. But we've got more to do, of course, so let's get going. Now in the last video, in order to get this source box to drop into the target drop zone, we looked at three JavaScript events in particular. Those were drag start, drag over, and drop. And you can see those here in our app.js file. If you haven't seen that video, by the way, you might want to go back and start with that one before you get to the second video. Now, in that previous video, we talked about a bunch of event handlers or events that are associated with the drag and drop API. So beyond the drag start, drag over, and drop events, which we looked at already, we also have drag enter, drag leave, drag end, and drag. And we're going to take a look at those in this video. To help our brains get organized with these events, let's organize them into two camps. We'll organize these events into ones that have to do with the source element or the element that's being dragged. And these events will be the drag event, the drag start, and the drag end event. And then the other events are the ones that have to do with the target element or the element that's being used as the drop zone. And the events associated with this are the drag over, drag enter, drag leave, and drop. But what are we going to do with all these events? Right? It's like I want to reach out to these events and say, what are we going to do with you? Well, one thing that's important when we're creating drag and drop is that we want to provide the user with feedback or visual cues to indicate what's going on during these drag and drop operations. So if we look at what we have right now in the browser, we can see that we're dragging the source box, and we can see that the other one is being left behind. And then when we go over the drop zone, we get this little indicator with the green plus symbol that we're entering a drop zone. But there's more that we can do to provide a better user experience. And that's what we're going to look at here. So let's go back to VS Code and look at the code that we had from the previous video. And let's add something on the drag start event. Let's say that when we start to drag, we want to give the user some more visual cues that we're starting a drag operation. So what we can do is come in here under line 5, and let's say e or event.target. Now this event.target is going to be the source element or the source box that we're dragging. And we'll say e.target.style.opacity equals, let's say, 0 0.3. So in other words, when we start to drag this source element box, we're going to see the box that gets left behind become sort of like a ghost by lowering its opacity indicating that we're dragging it elsewhere, and the original one is getting left behind. So let's save and go take a look at that. So now let's drag. And notice that the box behind the one I'm dragging has had its opacity lowered, and so the user is kind of getting more of an indication that we're dragging this and leaving the original source element behind. But then let's say what happens if the user changes his or her mind? What if the user is going here to the drop zone, and then all of a sudden has to go to the bathroom or something? And they're like, nah, they drag the box out, let go of the mouse, and the source element returns. Well, now this is where we want to use the drag end event in order to set this box's opacity back to 1, or its original state. So to do that, let's once again go back into VS Code, and let's make a new event handler on the source element. We'll say source.addEventListener. And here we're going to use that drag end event. This is going to tell us when the user has stopped dragging and let go of the mouse. As usual, we'll pass in the event here. And we're going to grab hold of that target element. And we're just going to do a reset. Basically going to set the opacity back to 1, which is the initial default state. And let's go back and check it out. So now when we start dragging the source element, we see its opacity change to 0.3, and then if I change my mind and let go of the mouse, we see the source element's opacity reset back to 1. Boom! Shamalama ding dong! So, so far we've looked at manipulating the style on the drag start and the drag end events. And as we said previously, these all have to do with the source element that's being dragged. But now we're going to focus on the drop zone, the target element. And we're going to start by looking at drag enter. So let's see what we have going on so far. I'm going to go ahead and drag my source element. 
and I'm going to hover it over the drop zone. And as you can see, we're getting this green cursor indicator, which we're just getting by default, by way of the browser. But let's do something a little bit more. Let's give the user a better indication that we're about to drop it like it's hot. Why don't we try giving the target element a background color of light gray? We'll do this on drag enter. So let's go back to our code editor and add that. So let's come in here on line 17. And on our target element, we'll add an event listener. Right, and that one is going to be drag enter. And this is going to fire the moment that the source element enters the drop zone. We'll pass in our event. And we'll say e.target. And now e.target is going to be that drop zone box. And we're going to say e.target.style.background equals. And we'll just do e, 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 which is going to be a light gray. And of course, here we're doing style.background, but you can also add a class, a classless.add, or whatever you want. But I'm just using style.background for easy explanation. So we can save, go back to the browser, let's grab our source element, and as soon as we enter the drop zone, we see it take on a light gray background color, giving the user further indication or feedback that a drop is about to happen. But as we saw before with the source element, if the user changes his or her mind, so if I decide to leave and not go through with the drop, but you can see that the target's background color remains gray, so we're going to want to reset this. And we're going to do that by way of the drag leave event. So once again, we'll go back to VS Code and we'll say target dot add event listener drag leave pass in the event and we'll just reset that styles background color. For now, we'll just set it back to an empty string. And if we save and go back to the browser, Let's try the same thing. Hover over the target zone and then change our mind. And you can see how that background color was removed and set back to its initial state. Now you might be sitting there completely frustrated and saying, why is this guy teasing us? Every single time he goes to drag that source element onto the drop zone, he changes his mind. All right, fine. Let's actually drop that source element onto the drop zone. Here we go. Let's drop it. And notice that it got dropped, but also notice that the drop zone's background color has remained that light gray. So I think what we should do, what would be better for the user, would be to reset the background color of this drop zone target to its initial state once the source elements has actually been dropped, since at that point we're done. So no problem, let's go back to VS Code and let's do that. We'll do that here in the drop event handler. So as before, we'll say e.target dot style dot background and set it to an empty string. Let's save and go back to the browser. And now let's try dropping this onto the target. And there we go. Once I let go of the mouse, the background color of the target drop zone changed back to its initial state. Now one thing you might be thinking is, could we have changed that background color of the target element with the drag over event handler? as opposed to setting up this separate drag enter event handler. Well, let's try something. Let's go into drag over and let's log out to the console, the code creative as a way to see when this drag over event actually gets fired. So we'll save. Let's go back to the browser now and let's drag our source element over the target. And as we do so, let's take a look at the console. And notice that the drag over event is getting fired continuously. So to do something like simply changing a background color to a different state, it would sort of be a waste to continuously fire that when we can just do it once via the drag enter event. And we sort of have a counterpart to this with the drag event that we have access to on the source element. So let's go take a look at that. We'll come in here under line 11. And on our source element, we'll add another event listener. This one will be the drag event. Pass in E or event. And let's log out to the console. What a drag to see when this drag event actually gets fired. And actually, let's come down here to line 19 and comment out this console.log so we don't get confused. And now let's go back to the browser and let's see when the drag event gets fired. 
So here we go. Oop, there we go. That thing is firing already. It's not waiting for anybody. 